March Economic Development and UW Extension Committee to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you do a roll call? James Schneider. Present. Tom Duffy. Here. Jesse Betcher. Here. Brian Bizanet. Mr. Bizanet will be here today. Okay. I see Mr. Betcher is on virtual, correct? Yes. Okay. Mr. Betcher, can you hear us? Mr. Betcher. <clears throat> Sergeant Major, can you hear us? <laughs> Mr. Betcher? So that I got a, two calls about public safety. They couldn't hear us online. You may want to double check that. Mr. Betcher, I'm going to uh, recognize that you're virtual, that you may be trying to communicate, and uh, we are un unable to hear you at this time. So we'll, uh, we'll work through those technical issues. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, based on your uh, roll call, we do have a quorum. Ms. Hessel. Um, are we uh, Here. <laughs> in compliance with open meetings laws? The meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statutes. All right, I'm sure the committee members. Uh, Mr. Betcher? I don't think there's any problems with audio, but I will just not hear them. That would be an issue. Did they recognize audio, you? But What's that? Did they recognize you? Somewhere. It, yeah, Lynn, Lynn recognized me. Okay. But it's Thank you. Thank you, though. I'm here. Well, we did finish the roll call. It's all right. We got it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, That's you don't okay. recognize me. You don't want to sit by me. It's I'm, fine. It's okay. <laughs> I'm going to fix that here in a little bit here. So, for all the committee right. members that are present, have you seen the agenda? Is there any changes to the agenda? <clears throat> Moving forward with the agenda, we have public comments. But before we do public comments, I want to welcome Miss Stacy Hessel to the committee. She has uh, recently been appointed and has already made the news. And uh, welcome. Um, today, what we're going to do is for the people who are presenting to the committee, um, take some time to introduce yourself, explain your your role with the explain your role with the committee. So that Ms. Hessel can understand who's uh, what role your 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 um, what your connection to the committee is, introduce yourself, and then just help her get kind of up to speed. She's kind of catching us midstream in terms of the work that we do on this committee. So, um, with that, we're going to go to public comments. Is there anybody here or online who would like to address the committee but is not on the agenda? Do we have any hands up? <clears throat> Hearing no public comment, moving on to number six. We have the minutes from last month's meeting. Has the committee had a chance to review the minutes? Yeah, I move you approve them as presented. I have a motion for Mr. Duffy to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second that. I have a second by Ms. Hessel. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion, I guess I'll call for a vote. Do we have any communication from Mr. Betcher yet? I, I think I'm up now, Mr. Schlender. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, sir. So <clears throat> do you have any uh, comments or concerns about the minutes, Mr. Betcher? No, I do not. I'm prepared to vote at this time. All right. Call for a vote on the motion. All in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Surrey County Agricultural Fair and Association Report. Do anybody here from the Surrey County Fair? Uh, no, no. Um, I used to be on it and they're having a fair social this spring. They were supposed to have it last weekend, but they changed it to the spring at the fairgrounds so it'd be more socially distanced. Do you know what date that is? Um, they haven't selected a date. So they haven't uh, made a firm date. So they just said that they're changing it to the spring. I'm not any longer on the 
on the board, but um, I was, and so I get the updates once in a while. Okay. Moving on to number eight, University of Wisconsin Extension Department Report. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so I, we did not submit a report this time around. We've um, done the last uh, couple educators in purpose in person, but I'll just introduce myself for Ms. Hessel. This, I'm Lori Valtricius and I'm the Area 2 Extension Director. And so Area 2 is Barron, Burnett, Rusk, Sawyer, and Washburn counties. And so um, you'll see me around and at those meetings every now and then too. So we do have educators who are serving Sawyer County in particular. And um, um, I'm just thinking that I'll get a packet of information together for you. I've done that for some other new committee members in the past too. And so it'll just maybe do some summary of the services that Extension offers there in Sawyer County. And believe it or not, you're coming on board at a, at a pretty good time because at the end of this week, we'll have our annual report, which is our first time we've done an area two annual report that will summarize um, the services in um, our area. And so all that will be hopefully sent out to um, all of you at the end of the week or early next week. Um, so it'll be hopefully a good summary for you. And I won't bore you with details this morning about everything, but certainly will be available and, and can talk with you individually as well of um, what would be good for you to know about extension in Sawyer County. Um, so if, um, or I'll answer any questions you might have at this point. Do you have any questions for UW Extension? Mr. Betcher, do you have any questions? No questions, thanks. Ms. Hessel? No, thank you. Mr. Duffy? No. Thank you for okay. your support. Can I just also add to, um, if no questions, I do want to let you know that we are looking at our 2022 budget. Of course, it's it's it'll be here before we know it. And so when I did the quick figures, it looks like um, there is a 3% increase for the educator fees, but there's still that $10,000 discount. Um, as you know, I sometimes call it the Kohl's coupon. Um, because there's one FTE um, in your county. And so that remains. Um, and then, Tom, you may know that there's a line for professional development and that is pulled out this year. And so bottom line, um, the increase looks like it'll be around $1,800 for the 2022 contract. And so I know we'll get creative with budgets before we know it. So I just wanted to give everyone a heads up of where we're standing for 2022. And that's it then. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Any questions for UW Extension? Moving on to number nine, Hayward Lakes Visitors and Convention Bureau, Ms. Beckman. Good morning. Um, Stacy, she knows all about tourism. Mm -hmm. So, and she, I've met Stacy many, many times. But we've had, we have so much that's going on right now that I'm going to kind of go through my report. Um, so, what we've been doing because of the sports shows, they were canceled because, you know, social distancing and all of that. So, we came up with an idea to do Facebook Live, which has been very successful. So, we're doing that once a month and we're kind of taking on the sports show mentality where we let people come basically and ask questions and and it's been going really well john myrie who's you know a local radio host um is my co-host with it and this was actually his brainchild and we all jumped on board to do it so we've had some great guests and we've had a lot of people watching and a lot of people asking questions so it's been it's been a really nice um kind of a different way to get to the visitors the other thing um and i know i've been talking about this for six months but the snowmobile gem grant has just been amazing usually we don't get money to do um, 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 an event or a promotion like this so we've had great great help from the sawyer county atv and snowmobile alliance they've really stepped up <clears throat> they've provided us with snowmobiles they provided us with actors and actresses to be in all of our pictures and video and it's been a really wonderful promotion and i just attached a couple of the photos that we took um, in the last couple weeks. Wisconsin Indian Head Country's fishing opener. It is a go and we are the um, host town. So the only, it is a um, uh, invite only to the actual governor's opener stuff. 
but we are going to do something for the community, which is going to be a fish fry, which is going to be held at the Hall of Fame. The fish is donated by the DNR. We're working together. Um, we'll prepare it and everything, and it'll be open to anyone from the community from 11 to 2. Um, Northwest Ifbeck, I don't know if you guys can see me, but we did finish the guide. Um, so if you if you want to copy that, I can get it to you. Otherwise, you can find it online under northwestwisconsin.com. Um, that's a collaborative of peace with 11 counties in the northwest part of the state. So it's kind of a nice, um, it's a silent sport piece. So if you're looking for, you know, skiing or hiking or bird watching or whatever, you can kind of see where you can go from one county to the next. Um, Snap a selfie was the also in part with in the gem grant. Um, it went really well. We had over 80 participants who submitted a picture. So I just kind of put some of the some of the fun photos people were taking. We had one, the person on the left there with she's kind of um, standing up on her machine. Yeah. Um, she got first place for the most, well, we had a committee that voted her picture as the best picture. And then we had two other winners that just were random. So that was really fun. Um, we reached over 80,000 friends and fans on Facebook. So it was very, very successful. Um, we're doing something new with videography. Bo Peterson, he's a local photographer. He is going to help us do some new things with our membership. We're going to do these little 30 to 60 second videos. We've, we found out that people just really, that's the way to go is with the videos. So we, um, we will start that um, here. I think we're gonna actually start it this month. Um, and so every person will get a 30 second little video kind of getting people excited because we realized when they go on Facebook or social media, Instagram, they want to watch it, they see it, and then, then they, they don't ever go back and look at it again. So instead of investing, you know, $6,000 in a welcome video, we figured these are more kind of what the, what they're requesting, just quick snippets and then they see it and then they move on to the next one. So website, and I know I've talked about this before about the ADA compatibility. Um, it's really important. Um, so we're, we're working with a company called Signal Fire to get that all updated. And that includes like hearing impaired and um, words on video, things like that, just so that everybody can get to the information that needs to get to the information without feeling that they have any kind of harder time finding the information. Sports shows. Again, everything has been canceled except for we're going to try the something new. It's going to be this weekend. It's the virtual um, canoe copia event. I'm really not sure how it's going to work. Um, I'm going to be available for live chats. So if people um, come into the, you know, we, we have like 50 pictures and we have video and all of our social media, everything's in there. Um, and then if they want a live chat, then I'll answer questions. Um, and that is a silent sport show. So that'll be interesting. And then um, so far right now, the Wisconsin State Fair is still on for August 5th through the 15th. So hopefully we'll be able to um, go forward with that one. Discover Wisconsin, that will be airing on April 17th. That is again, just remind you that's the silent sport or the power sports. So it's ATVing and snowmobiling. Um, so it'll be kind of nice because it'll launch right before the ATV season really hypes up. It'll be on Fox North Sports and KDL TV in Duluth. Um, and then a couple things that are going on <clears throat> down in Madison. The school start date, you know, they talk about that a lot. Um, it's never gone anywhere, but we do have um, the Destinations Wisconsin that is representing us and both um, representative Jimmy Boy and Senator Petrowski are in favor of keeping the school start date after the first, which is important to us up here because of the tourism that we have. We just don't want kids starting school before then because um, we, need, we need them for workers and we also want to keep our season a little bit longer if we can keep them out of school before the first. And then the other one is, so we found out this last couple of years that the room tax is getting reported correctly. So like Airbnb and um, 
VR, VRBO, they're just like kind of sending these checks to the city of Hayward, even though it really could be the town of Hayward's money or the town of Hunter's money. So they're just trying to clean up how they're receiving their room tax dollars and making sure it's going to the accurate township. So that's kind of, that's what's going on down in Madison. Any questions? Betcha, do you have any questions for Ms. Beckman? No questions for me. Any questions from the committee? No. Any questions from the floor? Ms. Beckman, thank you for your report. Thank you. Moving on to number 10, Northwest Regional Planning Commission report. Is anybody here from Northwest Regional Planning? The advisor will be anything until April. April. You're okay with that? <clears throat> Moving on to number 11, Mr. Gardner, Economic Development Corporation report. If you could introduce yourself if you have it to Ms. Hensel. She's also going to be serving as the uh, county board's representative on the same, on the, on, I don't know if it's the board of directors or, or whatever. So Mr. Gardner, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Stacy. I look forward to uh, meeting you in person and working with you in a number of different ways. I, my my name is Mike Gardner. I'm um, the current executive director of the Sawyer County La Couture Economic Development Corporation. I've been um, working in a couple of capacities over the last year. Um, started. I'm a part-time executive director currently, which I started in July of last year. I began this, this month's report with a little bit of a retrospect, both for, uh, that benefits uh, all, of, all of us in looking back over the last year. And um, the Economic Development Corporation um, sort of adapted to uh, the conditions beginning a, a year ago and uh, formed the economic recovery response team. I had a, a role in that in, uh, as a, in researching all the uh, available opportunities for uh, Sawyer County and La Couture Enterprises. Um, we did a lot of webinars and podcasts and uh, work with partners to keep, um, keep information um, readily available to businesses as uh, things got rolled out. Um, as you can, everybody experienced, things were a little confusing at first. So I, you know, I believe we played an effective role in uh, um, getting timely information out there and uh, directing people to the correct place to get uh, specific answers. and had a high level of uh, cooperation in our community with the uh, financial uh, institutions. And uh, uh, I believe the overall effort resulted in uh, a high level of return on opportunities to uh, retain and uh, for our businesses to recover. That does, you know, both for the organization and uh, you know, for in, in this type of reporting, it does benchmark where we're at. And as I've indicated there, we in, I'll speak more about, uh, we have, we sort of forego any major fundraising um, over the term and um, we'll begin um, a launch of a fundraising campaign uh, beginning this month. In uh, just in activities, we continued in the recovery assistance throughout, um, despite uh, the team dispersed last fall, and um, and I, I've I've maintained uh, the monitoring of details as uh, you know the CARES Act and and other things uh, unfolded. We tried to um, sort of uh, not only monitor but uh, curate the, the information is that we, so we didn't overly inundate people's uh, inboxes with email messages. So we've tried to put out timely and relevant um, information that would uh, assist businesses in getting what they needed. And as you, as you might expect, there's businesses in Sawyer County that were uh, certainly 
on top of it on their own and others who have uh, needed more handrails along the way. But we have been getting a good, good response, not only in the open rates for our messages, but also um, um, information exchange through uh, direct email and, and responses. As you, I, I anticipate here in the next uh, couple of weeks, we're gonna have another onslaught of uh, timely information as the American Rescue Plan becomes law and uh, details pertinent to uh, our businesses are unfold. So we'll continue to uh, try to keep uh, everyone up to date. We certainly appreciate uh, the assistance uh, when we do put things out. It's magnified by the Chamber's um, efforts and uh, hopefully people are getting what they need in regards to business retention, we keep, uh, you know, making contacts, finding out what's going on regionally and in the, at the state level. Um, develop partnerships which uh, help uh, help us not only uh, um, make the network that's going to be effective for Sawyer County, but also the relationships that can uh, provide opportunities in the future. We do through our info. Uh, info line and website, we do get um, inquiries about business startups and, um, you know, could begin uh, that information flow to help people um, not only take a business plan approach to their thinking, but also direct them to the type of resources that they'll need to uh, support them along the way. There is a, um, we also, have, you know, at this time of the year, uh, kind of both the regional economic indicators are being compiled. We're, you know, working with the Small Business Development Center to um, get the information that they're compiling and then or filter that down to what's pertinent to Sawyer County businesses. So if there's anybody on the committee that has things, uh, we'll, we'll be reporting on this and if there's any indicators that uh, any of you are aware of, we're certainly always looking for those things that uh, are unique to our business sectors and our economy that uh, help us understand what's going on. There is a new regional representative for the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. There's been a, a was a little gap in that position. I got a call scheduled with uh, that individual uh, next Monday and we'll look to uh, have continue with an effective partnership there. Regarding broadband, there's always something going on, never enough, uh, as you might expect, but uh, we, uh, there was the regional, uh, uh, the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund did make some changes. We're fortunate that we have uh, a Nervado representative on our board of directors and um, I'm able to effectively keep up to date with that. But um, there are some new players um, which we'll be reaching out to to find out what their intentions are now that they've won um, some rights to uh, provide service in Sawyer County. We'll see if the, those uh, yield additional opportunities. And um, there's also some new representatives uh, that um, have been identified now for some of the uh, our long-standing players. So we're reaching out to uh, not only uh, see what their plans are and what the Economic Development Corporation can do to assist them in getting uh, future grant funding so that um, the infrastructure in Sawyer County uh, can be built out to uh, meet the coming needs. Under uh, fundraising, that's, you know, again, uh, as is mentioned earlier in the report, we are we are reinitiating our previous year's efforts to reach out to cornerstone um, institutions and businesses to provide support to to continuously work towards uh, making the organization um, sustainable. We uh, are fortunate to have. Um, the ongoing support of Sawyer County government and the Lacouture um, Tribal Governing Board. 
But um, as um, we've discussed in the past, that is not the desired total, you know, future condition for the organization uh, overall. So we uh, um, have I've been looking at uh, some of the organization's previous efforts at fundraising, some of the materials and uh, contact information. And uh, beginning this week, we'll be uh, reaching out um, in, in that regard. I'd be glad to answer any questions or comments or any input that you can provide to, to guide the, these ongoing efforts. Betcha, do you have any questions for Mr. Gardner? Uh, no questions, thank you. Assessing? Mm -hmm. I do. Uh, how much of the county actually has broadband coverage now? We've talked about that for months. I mean, when is this going to be done? Is just talk or is there actually funds available or will there be? give us coverage mr gardner well there's been there's been challenges in that kind of assessment um part part of the you know it's it's an issue that was identified by um individuals who have been looking into this prior to even my uh, participation but um the way that you know much of that is driven by f uh FCS, uh, FSC, I guess, sorry, uh, uh, data, which the way that data is kept, if, if there is one person and it's done by census track, if there's one person in that census track that reports having acceptable speeds, a 25 megabit threshold, then the FSC keeps, says the whole area has it. So um, the current reality is it's real spotty. Uh, throughout the whole county. And, um, and of course, you know, in communicating with the individual service providers, each one has their own uh, unique uh, opportunities and challenges to fill that void. Um, so it's, it's really hard to get a read on it. I, I think that, uh, you know, the current thinking is, is, you know, we aren't where we need to be to thrive and grow. And um, we keep pressuring uh, service providers to, um, you know, to recognize that and, and, and offer, we offer them the support of our organization to uh, do what, what it takes to um, meet those needs. There is, there is um, some things going on in other counties in that regard, which uh, you know, I've been briefed on i mentioned in the report, Taylor County, uh, some counties are taking it upon themselves to build out fiber uh, infrastructure. Um, but, you know, whether, what, what is the best move forward for Sawyer County is what we're constantly assessing. And um, I'm, I'm encouraged by some of the new contacts that are, just became available and some of the efforts by locals uh, in the townships and stuff to uh, take it upon themselves to begin providing support to our efforts. Well, how much how much coverage is there actually in the county of broadband? And what is there a timetable? I mean, just talk about people are doing what they can do, but what, what's really going to happen? What's pushing this thing? I mean, is it just kind of just staying there? Or do we have a timetable when we can look and say by next year or five years or 20 years? How long do we have to wait? Well, I expect that um, because of the service provider, provider situation, it will, you know, you know, where we are able to make gains is going to be sort of by provider and by um, the type of neighborhoods that those service providers um, serve. There is no comprehensive solution under the current makeup of things. And I think that's why um, you're seeing individual localized efforts to take on a more comprehensive approach. Uh, just for example, and I'm not advocating for this, but Taylor County, um, I believe just bonded $8 million to lay the lay fiber on all the main, um, the main roads within the county and then to connect all the town halls. They, and then they will lease that out to the service providers. Um, 
there's a lot of fiber, I believe. I keep hearing stories. There's a lot of fiber already laid out in the main roads in, in Sawyer County. It's just the build out from, from that is what needs to happen. And it, it is very piecemeal and frustrating to, uh, to report. Well, does the rest of the committee have an idea? How much coverage do we have in Troy? How about the Troy? Do they have coverage? Or? Well, uh, there has been improvement in some of the tribal coverage. Mm -hmm. Come and step in. I think they're coming out of fire, warehouse or basement or somewhere. Um, we had a major discussion with this back five about five years ago, when uh, was it uh, CenturyLink was receiving federal dollars to address that, and that's where. Mr. Gardner has walked into now is where there was there was one person within the census tract and CenturyLink was claiming that for for the federal credit that they would get or the federal dollars that they would get the disbursement. And then uh, because they're a, an independent company or a, a company, those networks are confidential because it's proprietary, it's competitive, because we have what we have Devcom. The bottle is the provider for for the city of Hayward for um, Charter, which now calls themselves Spectrum, and then there's CenturyLink, and so they all have competing interests for coming out. But there's the infrastructure component, and no one's going to admit, and we don't know who has the ownership of the fiber optic on the state highways, and that's where the build-off would come from. But then there's just a matter. I think there was. I think it's like one hundred fifty thousand dollars for a build out to a residential component, but then it comes under either it's a pipe or, or something else. And I. That's what I vaguely remember because it got so controversial at CenturyLink. Because um, we, I say this out of respect, but Sean was our congressional representative, and he got frozen out of uh, having those conversations with CenturyLink, and. Uh, we're basically told Surrey County better not ask any more questions or they were not going to provide any more services because they were starting to build out from, from the town from the town of Hayward out outwards towards like Stone Lake and, and closer to the reservation. So Bevcom stepped up and uh, I don't know if Jump River also provides internet in some Indian head, I think is what they call it. So I think that's a worthwhile question, Mr. Gardner. Um, if you can coordinate with FSC. Or actually, you know, not Mr. Gardner, Ms. Hessel, if you want to ask that question when you get your, when you guys, when you have a board meeting and find out, FSC, I think is, uh, I don't know if it's a federal agency or not, but that would be, that would be the question to ask in terms of. Um, Are we talking about PSC, Public Service Commission of Wisconsin? PSC, PSC. I think it's, well, there's a federal chief yeah. too. If we broadband in Wisconsin, I mean, PSC in Wisconsin is in charge of that. It is it okay? Um, so I don't know uh, what Mr. Gardner was referring to that or not, but uh, also within the uh, proposed state budget, you know, there's additional funding for broadband. Um, you know, the state recognizes mm -hmm. um, the efforts too, um, but it is highly dependent on those providers and what they are willing to do. And uh, population. And that, and that last mile to the house is what really causes the mm -hmm. issue. Um, so, you know, when we talk broadband, it might not be fiber that serves a lot of the area. It might be some other technology like the, the satellite technology or the fixed base technology. So, because um, it is too expensive for these carriers to put in fiber to one or two houses down the line. So that's, that's the main problem in our northern counties. Yeah, there is uh, the, the several new players that uh, did um, win in the federal auction for our service area was a charter a, and a company I believe out of Minnesota called LTD Broadband. But uh, Starlink, which is more the satellite based, is uh, could increasingly be a player. So um, with these new players, I, you know, it's really time for us to come up with a better answer for, for Tom's question and uh, and so that we can uh, move forward, whether it's in advocacy to federal state governments or, um, or even applying for grants so we can get the, the, the what we need um, to begin the solution of this problem. I appreciate your input. The easiest question is gonna be the hardest question. So if you wanna start pick that up and just ask how much coverage do we have or what kind of, What's the infrastructure that we have that's set up in Surrey County? 
and uh, we're going to walk into some uh, some concerns or you know confidentiality. But if we could have that, if we could initiate that conversation from the county government um, and talk with uh, with um, Edmund and with Petrowski to see if we can get that information because. I mean, if we have to sign a non-disclosure agreement just to find out where the where the where the networks are, and it help maybe supplement that, I think that would be a good initiative for the Economic Development Corporation. Because here's the problem that we're going to have with this going forward: is the funding support for this is going to be a really hot button item when it comes up for the budget discussion. We have that coming up in October, right, or August, or uh, starting uh, starting right now. Yeah. So, um, so there's always been an issue of what kind of contribution does this does, does this entity do for the county? And um, and so there's some county board members who have very tough positions regarding the, the fiscal conservative kind of approach. So if there's a if we can have them, they they've always been at the forefront of the of the broadband issue, but they never really had the full support in terms of or the muscle to kind of get that done. So if you want to take that under under advisement. And, that up. That'd be interesting because then that's a that's a legitimate. I mean, every citizen wants to know where the internet's at. You know, either, they either have it, they don't want no one to touch it, or so they want their, their relatives or their family to have it somewhere so that they can get in contact. Any other questions, Mr. Betcher? Do you have any anything you wish to add to the internet discussion, or for any questions for Mr. Gardner for the Economic Development Corporation? No, it's uh, it's all interesting. Uh... I'm anxious to see where this goes, but I don't have any questions. Thanks. Mr. Hessel, Ms. Hessel. Sorry. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go home and start over here. Mr. Duffy? No. All right. Mr. Gardner, thank you for your report. <clears throat> Moving on to number 12, motorized and non-motorized trail report. Mr. Rotec, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you for putting me on the agenda here. Uh, Don Rotek, Trail Coordinator for the Surrey County Snowmobile ATP Alliance. Um, for snowmobiling, we got off to a late start. We didn't have much for snow in December, but otherwise in January, we had fantastic snow here in the northern part of the county. Southern part of the county was still a little bit slow down there, but we had great snowmobiling here January and February. Um, Mother Nature was very good to us here. A lot of other counties did not have good snow. And then, of course, Michigan and Minnesota both helped us out tremendously because either the businesses were closed to customers being inside or they were limited on the numbers. So a lot of people that normally would snowmobile in Minnesota and Michigan came over here for our trails and also because they could go inside uh, to eat and warm up and such for snowmobiling. So we had a great season, although it looks like we're just about done with our season right now. Um, most of the groomers are put away. Uh, so we're gonna be moving on to our ATV season. And uh, most of our ATV, UTV trails are open right now. And with this warm weather, you're gonna see an influx on, on people coming in here. I think for, for riding right now with, with this condition, um, people wanna get outside with the nice weather. And so I think we're gonna see a lot of ATV and UTV traffic here. Season. Any questions for Mr. Morocek? Mr. Betcher, do you have any questions for Mr. Morocek? No, I don't. Thanks. Anybody else? I have one part, I have a question. So you're saying that Michigan and Minnesota did a. So what did, how did they, tell me again, what it is that they closed, okay. they closed what? snow building? No, not snowmobiling. What they did is their businesses, you could not go in mid upper Michigan, you could not go inside and eat in the restaurants or bars in, in Michigan. You had to go get your food and go outside and eat your food outside. And now they're limited, I think, I don't know if it's 25%, 25 or 50% capacity for people going inside the businesses to eat in there for restaurants and bars. So Michigan and Minnesota did that? Minnesota's, I think Minnesota's at 50% right now on their restaurants for capacity. So for economics, it, it's killing those businesses up there that they can only have 50% capacity. And so we don't have that kind of restriction in Wisconsin? At least I'm not aware of that. Part. 
they they tried it early on. Oh, when was it? The governor put a twenty five percent. I don't remember the political announcement. We're aware of what the <laughs> right. So we do so, not have that at all right now in Wisconsin. Correct. So the way that the state regulation or state monitoring of COVID, I'm assuming is what we're talking about. Yep. As ours was different from Minnesota, Michigan and Minnesota. Big time. And so we yes. were the benefit then, or we were the recipient then of the increased activity for the snowmobilers. Yes. And did we have any, are you aware of, uh, of what the COVID numbers were reported for Sawyer County or for Northern Wisconsin? Did we have a spike? Did we have, was it a super spreader event? Did we have any kind of impact? Negative impact with the increase. Of I have not heard of any negative impacts uh, with COVID because of because of it. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Morota? Thank you for your report, sir. Moving on to number thirteen, historical society update. Do we have a chance for them to come in? We invited Mr. Ferguson and sent him the link, but I do not see him on. All right, Mr. Betcher, do you want to just set this agenda for next month? Uh, yeah, if we could just uh, do that for next month. <coughs> Thanks. Just for some background, we don't have Mr. Bizonet here. And Mr. Bizonet was working on that from the tribal side. Uh, essentially what, what we have here, and Mr. Betcher, if you want to jump in, you can, but Mr. Betcher was having a conversation with people from the State Historical Society, or Story County in that state, Story County Historical Society, and they have a, a building where all of their documents are kind of being held and um, they don't have space for people to access it. And uh, there's a lot of information in there that's, uh, that would be, that I think is important, it's crucial, it speaks to the history of the county, history of the relationship between the tribe and the county, the development of the county over the centuries that it's been here. And uh, we we're trying to figure out if there's a way that we could provide some assistance to help share that information and make this a kind of a destination spot. So the, the, the evolution of the conversation now has happened where the tribe is actually invested in its own historical kind of place and they have space to receive information and provide exhibits and it's a destination spot for people who come on the reservation. And so we were trying to see if we could get a conversation between those two entities with support from the county and from the tribe to move forward on this idea. And so we've invited the historical society the first time we, I don't know what happened with them, Second time we made a more concerted effort to get them the link, they're not here. Um, and then today, Mr. Biznet was going to provide a report on that, but he got pulled in uh, on his other his other job and couldn't be here today. And so um, I think this is an exciting opportunity, but uh, we just need to help move it along. So um, with that, I would just ask, well, entertain a motion to uh, table this and set it on to the agenda for next month. Absolutely. A motion for Mr. Duffy and a second for Ms. Cecil. Uh, Mr. Betcher, do you have anything else you wish to add to that uh, discussion? Um, no, not not at this time. All right, I have a motion uh, to table or to table table number thirteen and set that on the agenda for next month. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any, Any abstentions? Motion carries. All right, next is uh, number 14 is future agenda items. Uh, <clears throat> do we, is, does the committee have any any agenda items they would like to add for next month's meeting? With regard to uh, the broadband, Matthew would ask a question about coverage within the county. If you go to the Public Service Commission uh, website, uh, they do have the county, uh, all counties, the state of Wisconsin actually uh, mapped out. And you can see the, the wireless uh, download speeds. Um, and if you zoom in, you can actually click on a, an address um, and it will tell you who the service provider is and the speeds in that area. Um, so, you know, that's about as best as, that we can do as far as uh, figuring out what, uh, what broadband speeds there are. Um, but as we were discussing earlier, this map is kind of a lie because uh, you know, a lot of this is the dark blue. 25 plus uh, megabits per second, but there's a lot of areas that are dark blue that, that don't get that. So again, you know, one or two people 
uh, get it uh, in that area, great, but uh, further down the line, they're not getting it, even though it, it's dark blue in some of these areas. So that's part of the conundrum, you know, because CenturyLink will say, oh, we've already served that area, we're not doing it anymore. Um, so you want to put this on the agenda for next month? Uh, I would. I just was trying to get it up earlier when we were talking about broadband, but uh, since he did ask the question and it was referred to uh, next month to, to get more information, that's the information that you were looking for. Mr. Hoff is good with providing information. So does the committee have any agenda items for next month? Mr. Duffy? No. Cecil? No. Mr. Betcher? No, I do not. All right. So <clears throat> I do. Um, at our last full county board meeting, uh, Mr. Betcher had on his own initiative taken an uh, opportunity to address a glaring omission that had been going on for the board for more than a number of years and passed a mission statement. And so I was uh, inspired by that and researched other counties and other committee mem committee boards. And then when we have modified our committee rules, we're actually supposed to have a mission statement and kind of a, a purpose for our website to declare what the role of this committee is and then kind of gives a, a line out the jurisdiction components. And we only have one committee that does that, it's land, force, and water. So I have a draft that I put together for um, the committees that I'm chair for. So I have public safety, I have CJCC, and then economic development. So I would ask that we could place this on the agenda for next month so that I can distribute this for everyone's review. And then after that review, we can send it on to the full board for approval or modifications or or kill it. So, any objections to having that placed on the agenda? No. Mr. Betcher? Uh, sounds brilliant. No objections for me. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to call it the, the Betcher movement. <laughs> any other matters for discussion only? Mr. Betcher, do you have any other thing else you can bring up to the committee? No, sir. Cecil? No. You want to sing a welcome song or no. any other kind of thing? No, or not at all. Remind us that we're still here. Mr. Duffy, do you have anything to add? <laughs> Thank you. All right. If not, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Mr. Duffy, can I get a signature from you? Oh.